Hello friends and welcome back. Thank you for joining me for the final part of my Scotland travel vlogs. We're starting off strong here with potentially my favorite place in Scotland, the Isle of Iona. Iona is very small, only has a population of 177, and is home to the famous Iona Abbey. This island is incredibly small and peaceful. There is beauty in every single nook and cranny. The water is so clean and pure, you can tell that the people have a lot of respect for the land and the sea. So here I am getting off the little boat that took us to the isle. I'm very excited to be here since I did do some research and I learned about the Isle of Iona before coming here and it was definitely in my top places to visit. Upon arrival, there is a nice paved walkway all the way up to the abbey. Along the paved road, there are several shops, a couple of houses interspersed, and even a couple community gardens, which I found really sweet. Now the abbey is kind of the main attraction to see here. It's very old, and there's a lot of beautiful history here. While we were here, they were refurbishing one of the parts of the abbey, so we couldn't go over to that side, but we got to see the majority of it while we were visiting. There is a sense of calm and holiness in this space. My favorite part of the abbey is the courtyard. And the courtyard was very interesting because I had done some research and I thought it was so much bigger when I had seen it in footage before, but when I was walking along the courtyard in real life, it was actually much smaller. It still feels very open and spacious. There's a sense of clean lines and simple architecture that keep it very aerated and graceful. Here's a full view of the abbey where you can see over on the left side it's being restored. And over on the grounds, nearby there is a cemetery. Once again, there are more beautiful cows here. Definitely always a spark of joy to my day when I get to see cows in Scotland. The shops here are really wonderful and there's a lot of amazing local artists. So if you guys visit the Isle of Iona, I highly recommend you get something here. I actually went into a jewelry shop and looked at some items and I almost bought a necklace and then I didn't and then when I returned home after my trip I really wish I bought it so thank goodness they had an online shop and I went ahead and ordered it for myself. So if you see something here that you like definitely go ahead and get it. Learn from my mistake and don't have the regret of not getting it while you were there. I 
Iona is a place that will always live in my heart. There's a sense of peace that just resonates at a very unique tone and I'm just so thankful I got to visit and be here. So once we were done with our tour, we sailed back to the Isle of Mole, where we got on our bus and went all the way back. And it's quite a long journey back. From there we got on a ferry, and we even saw a rainbow. That evening we drove to Glasgow, which was the last leg of the trip, and we were so lucky to be able to stay with some family friends of my boyfriend, and they were so incredibly kind and wonderful tour guides for us. They took us to the Roman bathhouse ruins first, and this was actually quite surprising for me because I didn't even know that there was Roman architecture around in Scotland, but I'm also not a historian myself, so <laughs> I don't know if that's common knowledge or not, but it was very cool to see nonetheless. There were so many different kinds of baths in the Roman bathhouse, and there were even many plaques to illustrate and explain about how the setup was, and even some funny illustrations as well. Headed more towards downtown Glasgow, there is beautiful murals and street art everywhere. This building here is one of the oldest, if not the oldest building in Glasgow. And I love it because it has a bit of a giraffe-like texture to it with the colors and the different sizes of stone. If you ever visit Glasgow, be sure to look at the streets and the buildings very closely because you may notice that it looks very similar to a certain Batman movie that came out recently. Apparently Glasgow is where they filmed that movie, which was another fun fact I learned from our wonderful hosts. Here we see the Glasgow Cathedral. This cathedral was probably the most incredible and gothic-like. It was also the biggest and the most impactful. I highly recommend taking some time to explore the cathedral. It's so big we actually didn't even get to really take a look at the entire thing, but we went through and saw as much as we could while also fitting many other things into the day. The inside of the cathedral is absolutely stunning, with ceilings so high you can't even imagine, and so much detailed, ornate architecture. It's hard not to just walk around, eyes wide, jaw open, at the immaculate beauty. The colorful stained glass windows really add a pop of color and softness to the very dark, stony, almost Hogwarts style walls and columns. There was also some beautiful paintings and artwork in here that I wasn't expecting but pleasantly surprised to see.
After the cathedral, we had some lunch and then went over to the famous Kelvin Grove Art Museum. I cannot recommend this museum enough. My only regret is that we didn't show up sooner. We only had about an hour to look through and we barely even scratched the surface. We saw a Dali and even a Van Gogh. We got through most of one floor, but there were so many rooms that I wanted to see. And I took a few photos of some of my favorite pieces, but there are just countless, countless works of art, sculptures, paintings, the whole lot. I always feel incredibly inspired when I come to an art museum and I was so thankful that we got to see what we did. If you've been following the series so far, you saw in, I think it was part two, we went to the Edinburgh Botanical Garden. So we decided to visit the Glasgow Botanic Garden as well. So not one, but two botanic gardens, which is such a treat. Each one is beautiful, but they're both completely different, which was really refreshing, so it didn't feel like a repeat of anything. The Glasgow Botanic Garden is a lot more open and spacious, and it feels like a park because it is in the middle of downtown. There are not as many plants just out freely in the open, like in the Edinburgh one. However, the Glasgow Botanic Garden has several greenhouses filled with a wide variety of plants. Over at the main greenhouse, it's filled with statues and many tropical plants. They even had a small section for carnivorous plants, which were very exciting to see. They have veins and different colors and textures to them. It was just really cool. This greenhouse is really lovely because it almost feels like a maze of sorts. You can just keep walking around and around and there's always different turns you can take to see more nature and beauty and art. Outside of the greenhouses, they did have a few notable flowers like rhododendron, roses. Those were the main ones that were in season and blooming. And somebody even knitted a sweater for this bench, which I was very impressed by. After the Glasgow Botanic Garden, we went further downtown, saw many more beautiful murals and street art everywhere, did a little shopping, and went to the famous Gallery of Modern Art in Glasgow. Now again, I've taken mainly pictures here. We saw an Andy Warhol, which was pretty impressive. 
And here's a clip I took of one of the rooms. And Riverside Park along the Hudson. As a kid growing up, I know Micah from streets that glinted in the sun, playgrounds peopled by boulders that seemed made of silver and gold, rocks on the beach with layers you could peel open like pages in a book. Peter told me some mineral samples of Micah are turned. My only complaint is, after seeing the Kelvin Grove Art Museum, the Gallery of Modern Art actually seemed a bit disappointing in comparison. However, I do still feel like it's worth seeing, so if you're going to see both the art museums, I would definitely recommend seeing this one first and then going to the Kelvin Grove Art Museum. Anyway, that concludes my entire trip to Scotland. If you guys have watched all five parts, congratulations for completing it and thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed. Definitely feel free to like, share, and comment. And don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with all my new content. Thank you so much. I'll see you in my next one.